This lady was the Empress Consort of the Byzantine Empire from 797 to 802. She was born in Athens, Greece, and she married the Byzantine Emperor Leo IV in 768 and became Empress Consort when he ascended to the throne in 775. After Leo's death in 780, she became regent for her son, Constantine VI, but eventually deposed him and took the throne for herself in 797. As Empress, she was known for her efforts to restore the use of icons in the Byzantine Empire, which had been banned by Leo III in 726. She also made efforts to strengthen the Empire's diplomatic relations with other countries, including the Holy Roman Empire. However, her reign was also marked by political and religious turmoil, including conflict with the papacy and the failed marriage proposal of Charlemagne, the King of the Franks. In 802, Irene was deposed by her own Minister of Finance, Nicephorus I, and was exiled to the island of Lesbos, where she eventually died. Despite her tumultuous reign, she is remembered as one of the most powerful and influential women in Byzantine history. So join me now as we look back on the life of Irene of Athens. And please like the video and consider subscribing for more historical stories. Irene, an individual hailing from Athens in Greece, entered this world sometime between 750 and 756. She belonged to the illustrious Sarantipakos family, which held substantial political clout in the heart of mainland Greece. Despite being deprived of her parents, her relative Constantine, who had held the title of nobleman as well as being a military general for the district of Hellas during the close of the 8th century, offered his guardianship. On the 1st of November in the year 769, Irene was summoned to the imperial city of Constantinople by the then ruler Emperor Constantine V. Within three days of her arrival, she was joined in holy matrimony to his son, Leo IV, in a lavish ceremony. A few weeks later, on the 17th of December, Irene was crowned in a grand and regal event. The motivation behind her selection as the bride of the young Leo IV remains uncertain. It has prompted some scholars to theorise that Irene might have been picked up through a bride show. In this tradition, qualified young women were displayed before the groom, until one was eventually chosen. If that were the case, she would be the first imperial bride to be selected this way. There is no solid evidence to support this theory, except for the unusual circumstance of Irene being chosen as Leo IV's spouse. In the first months of the year 771, Irene welcomed a bundle of joy to the world, a son who was given the name Constantine VI, in honour of his grandfather, who, as it happened, was also the father-in-law of Irene. A few years later, in September 775, tragedy struck when Constantine V passed away. As a result, Leo IV, who was then only 25 years old, was catapulted to the throne, but with Irene assuming the title of Empress. Although a disbeliever in religious icons like his father, Leo IV followed a moderation policy. He was the ruler at the time and was keen on reversing some of the harsh policies that his father had implemented. As part of his reforms, he eliminated the penalties imposed on monasteries. Additionally, he went ahead and started to appoint monks to the role of bishops. But tragedy struck in 780 when Patriarch Nicetus I of Constantinople breathed his last. Leo IV handpicked a confident Paul of Cyprus to fill the vacant position, who was known to be sympathetic to the iconophile cause. However, during Lent of 780, Leo IV's policies on iconophiles became more severe, after catching several notable courtiers venerating icons. He had them apprehended, beaten and tortured. Leo had also found two icons hidden under Irene's pillow. He initiated an investigation and uncovered the individuals who had brought the icons. Irene was reprimanded for violating the law and betraying her faith. But she insisted that she was unaware that the icons were there. But Leo refused to engage in any further marital activities with her after the incident.
Upon the passing of Leo IV on 8th of September 780, his wife Irene ascended as regent for their young son, Constantine VI. A mere six weeks later in October, Irene faced a conspiracy organised by distinguished dignitaries who aimed to install Caesar Nikephoros, Leo IV's half-brother, as a new emperor. Irene had Bardas, the former military governor of the Armenic theme, Gregory, chief accountant of the Imperial Courier Service, and Constantinos, the commander of the Imperial Bodyguard, punished by whipping, shaving their heads, and exiling them. She replaced them with dignitaries who were loyal to her, and Irene now had Nikephoros and his four siblings ordained as priests, rendering them ineligible to rule. Empress Irene of the Byzantine Empire broke from the traditional expectations of female regents and claimed power behind what was deemed acceptable. Her early coins depicted herself and her son Constantine VI as co-rulers rather than with her as the regent and him as the ruler. Additionally, Irene was portrayed holding the orb instead of Constantine and only her name was listed on the front of the coin. At the same time, Constantine was relegated to the less critical backside. Irene's name also took precedence over her son in all forms of communication and official documents, with her signing orders in her own right and her name taking priority in the Oath of Allegiance. Despite her apparent dominance, Irene remained conscious of her vulnerability as a female regent. The previous female regent, Empress Martina, had been exiled after less than a year in power, and many anticipated a similar fate for Irene. Irene, realising the importance of having solid allies beyond the borders of the Byzantine Empire, set her sights on forging connections with foreign powers. In 781, she embarked on a mission to cultivate ties with the Carolingian dynasty and the papacy in Rome, hoping to cement a lasting and beneficial relationship. She arranged a marriage between Constantine and Rotrude, the daughter of Charlemagne, who was engaged in a war with the Saxons and later became the king of the Franks. Irene even went so far as to send an official to teach the Frankish princess Grieg. However, Irene ultimately broke off the engagement in 787, much to her son's anger. Irene's most notable achievement was re-establishing the adoration of icons, which were images depicting Christ or the saints. Two councils were held to push home Irene's belief in the use of icons. The first council was held in 786 at Constantinople, but opposition obstructed it. The second council convened in 787, which finally gave her wish and formally restored the veneration of icons and reunited the Eastern Church with the Roman Church. Although this development improved relations with the papacy, it did not prevent the outbreak of hostilities with the Franks, who seized control of Istria and Benevento in 788. In his coming of age, Constantine grew increasingly restless under the oppressive rule of his mother, who continued to hold complete control over the state, despite him now having reached an age of maturity. He rebelled against his subordinate status, but was met with opposition and defeat by the Empress, who demanded that all oaths of loyalty be taken in her name alone. Irene also attempted to garner support from the army to legitimise her absolute power, which caused discontent that eventually swelled into an open rebellion in 790. To restore order, Constantine feigned friendship by restoring Irene's titles and position as ruler on the 15th of January 792, and thus began the Irene-Constantine co-rulership, though the rivalry between them persisted. In 797, Irene organised a conspiracy against Constantine by manipulating the nobles, officers, bishops and courtiers. In his quest for support, he fled to the provinces. However, in those territories, those involved in the conspiracy continued to intimidate him. Constantine was captured by his attendants loyal to his mother, and on the Asiatic shore of the Bosphorus, he was taken back to the palace at Constantinople, where he was ushered into a cell and blinded on the 19th of August. It is unknown if he survived this ordeal. (music) 
Irene's unique status as an empress who ruled autonomously was accentuated by the coincidental emergence of the Carolingian Empire in Western Europe, rivaling Irene's Byzantium in size and potency. It was ruled by Charlemagne, his early reign witnessed the invasion of Italy, where he annexed the Lombard Kingdom. He then waged war against the Saxon tribes in northern Germany for over three decades, annexing their land and compelling them to convert to Christianity. On Christmas Day of 800, Charlemagne was crowned Emperor by Pope Leo III. During the ceremony, the clergy and nobles proclaimed Charlemagne Augustus. To justify Charlemagne's coronation, some argued that the imperial position was vacant, asserting that a woman was unsuited for the role of the emperor. However, Charlemagne never laid claims to the lands of Irene and the Eastern Roman Empire. Yet relations between the two empires remained strained. In 802, a group of influential noblemen hatched a plot against the then ruler, who happened to be a woman, Irene. On the 31st of October, they succeeded in overthrowing her and installed Nika Forrest, who had been in charge of the finances as the new monarch. The ousted leader, Irene, was banished to the island of Lesbos, where she had to rely on spinning wool to earn a living. Tragically, she met her demise on the 9th of August the following year. She accepted her fall from power, perhaps to save her life, yet given the sudden and complete reversal of circumstances, it is not unexpected that the former empress, who was in her 50s by now and displaying physical indications of the hardships she had endured, and was in the end overwhelmed by the shock. Thank you so much for watching the video, it's really much appreciated. And don't forget to support the channel by subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.